Hello everyone, and today I'll be taking a look at my new 1955 Chevrolet Camio Coca-Cola pickup truck, delivery truck, whatever you want to call it. This kit is by AMT, and it also comes with these two, um, it's a special kit, as in it comes with two die-cast vending machine and a dollar from the late 50s, or 60s, I'm not actually sure what year those vending machines are from. And the kit includes everything you need to build the kit shown on the box, and even a few extra options that I'll get into showing you later. Now here are the um, die-cast vending machine and dolly I was talking about, I'll show you a more detailed look at those later. What we got here is basically the um, the interior assembly. Here are some of the front, or the quarter panels on the sides. I'm not exactly sure if they're actually called that. In the, they're basically the rear panels in the back of the pickup truck. Um, we got the interior on there, most of the steering wheels, um, rear hatch, hood. And then on the next sprue we got the chassis, um, bed, and the interior slots. So you just slide it inside the bed if that makes any sense, which it probably doesn't. Anyway, what we have here are basically all of the um, th our components that go into the chassis and engine. We got our drivetrain belt, uh, fan belt, engine block, oil pan, all the other parts that attach into the engine fan belt. And then on the next screw we got the exhaust, some of the firewall, the um, parts of the grill, Hood accessories. Um, there's a little uh, visor that can go over the front windscreen if you choose to have that in there as an option. You don't have to put that on. And then we also have the really nice chrome pieces. We've got that nice grill there. We have our front bumpers for hubcaps and um, our little Chevy badge along with a few other accessories on there. Now as I said before this kit does come with a few accessories and these rims are one of the one of those. These are just an optional rim set. Um, this kit also comes with an optional tire set that I'll show you a little bit more later. Here is the cab body, very clean. Um, a few mold lines if you don't mind mold lines and with this kit. Otherwise, you will have to do a bit of sanding to get those lines all smooth and smoothened out. Smoothed out. Is that even a word? I don't even know. Okay, then we have our decal sheet. Sorry, you can't really see those white decals on there, but they are there. They say Coca Cola. And then the red decals are pretty obvious, they see Coca-Cola as well. Basically everything on here says Coca-Cola when you look at it, except the license plates. They say North Carolina, I think, or something like that. Oh, then here are the wheel and tires I was talking about. So the white walls are for the stock version of the pickup truck. And then we have those little red trimmed ones, and those are for the ex uh, extra accessories. But of course you can swap the wheels around, like if you want the red striped ones on the stock rims and you can do that. Oh, what I just threw away there was a glass accessory and on um, clear plastic accessories. Those were very really nice as well. Um, very clear. Although along the edges I did experience a bit of crack. Now what I have here now are the die cast vending machine and dolly. Um, I did have a few little issues painting this. Um, I attempted to paint it red, but then the paint just wouldn't stick because of its sm really smooth su surface, because it is die cast. And also that paint on there makes it extra smooth. And now onto the assembly of the build. Assembly of the build. Assembly, I don't think that's a real thing, never mind. I'm just going to start playing the kit. What I'm doing now, just basically, it's kind of obvious. Um, I don't even know why I'm narrating this part, I'm just kind of bored. But, um, what I'm doing now... Basically assembling the engine block. That's basically it. I use a little knife just to cut away the excess sprue pieces from the chassis and all the other parts as well. Just to use them clean just to make all those little lines clean instead of having to bend them out and risk breaking them with my fingers. I used to have a pair of sprue cutters, but somehow they ended up breaking. I'm not actually sure the reason. Just the rubber handles on the end of them really snapped. I was using them to cut a piece of um, balsa wood, which I probably shouldn't have been using them to cut. And of course, they snapped.
I ended up using a bit of super glue along the edges of the tailgate areas and the um, bed because most of the parts I was very surprised didn't really fit well. You'll see a little brown piece there. That was where I had to melt some of the plastic with a lighter to be able to get it into the slots in the old correct orientation and it, it, this model kit should not be like that. I think that the instructions were not clear at all on what to do with the bed of the pickup truck and that it really should have better directions. Next, I moved on to the painting step of the model and I began painting the chassis flat black as well as um, most of the engine components, not the actual engine block, just the fan belt, drivetrain, all the other parts on the real car, or truck I should say, pickup truck, would be um, black, flat black. You can use gloss back black too, it just depends on your preference. I chose flat black because I happen to like how that looks on a chassis. It also adds a nice matte tone underneath the body so it doesn't take too much away from the overall paint job of the truck. I um, also, I always forget to, pr um, to paint the back of the wheels. For some reason though, it just slips my mind and I'm like, oh, I forgot to paint the end. So I always have to go back over. Waste a lot of time redoing those, so don't forget to do that. I then moved on to the interior and although the instruction manual calls for this masking of white and red, I just decided to go for a plain red interior as I thought it would be a little too flashy for the car if it had white and red on the interior and a white body. Um, now what I'm doing right now, just painting the engine block orange. There is the finished engine, and I just plopped it right into the spot where it goes. Now I want to talk a bit about the painting steps, because that's kind of important, and also about the airbrush I use. So, um, I, I purchased a new airbrush. You can go check the link up top in the right-hand corner. It should be appearing right now, and there is that is a link to the video where I reviewed my new airbrush. Isn't, if you want to know, it's an Iwana Eclipse HPCS Dual Action Gravity Feed Airbrush. This airbrush works so much better than the old one. Honestly, the paint quality is so nice. Basically, it pretty much covers like a spray can. When you use a spray can, you don't like, I don't really like how the finished product turns out, but I like how it covers a lot, vast amounts of area at one time, so it's easier and not to spend as much time painting and painting each piece. And that's how this airbrush basically is. Okay, I'm about to move along now. Uh, what I'm doing now, just coming along with my black paint, and I'm putting my black paint over on my rims. Now you might think this is a bit crazy, but you'll see. 
it'll um, add some nice shadows in later on. So what I'm doing now, I put the black paint on, make sure not to let it dry, come back through with a paper towel or a Q-tip, whatever you prefer, and then wipe off the excess paint, leaving a bit in that in those little gaps in there or the recessed areas, and it adds a nice little look. You can see it looked really great on the grill there. And now what I did after that, took my little silver sharpie there and outlined all my chrome trim on the model. Or there would be actually chrome on the real vehicle. You gotta be very careful, keep your hands steady when you're doing this, make sure no one else is around, because I've had many models where I've accidentally started talking to someone and then um, my pen has slipped out of my hands or accidentally moved off of the line I was working on and has completely ruined my paint job. Then it has taken a lot of work to clean that up, so just make sure so when you're doing this, you're being very careful and hold, your, keep your hands steady so you don't have to have a lot of unnecessary cleanup. Now you can see the difference it makes having that chrome trim really adds a lot of realism to the car, truck I mean, that it did not already have. And now I just started to work on the front headlight assembly. Basically everything that would go on after the paint had fully dried, I waited around three days just to make sure that nothing was still tacky and then I just started attaching everything as I said before. I attached that nice little front grill emblem and I'm not sure if this was actually done in the factory, I don't believe it was, but I ended up painting the front Chevy badge red. I think just because um, it was, it's a Coca-Cola truck and I think it really brings the car together. It adds a little bit of detail on there too that it would have wouldn't have normally had. Make sure to attach that grill or the bumper to the chassis and then I move on to using my orange silver, sil silver, silver sharpie to add some nice blinker details. It's a lot easier than using orange paint I found because it's the silver, the orange sharpie when it goes on is still a little clear so it adds this nice orange plastic effect. I did the same thing for the silver brake lights except I used a red sharpie and then I also add the little blinker detail at the bottom there with the uh, what's it called? The orange sharpie again. Then I move on to the decals. Um, I, added, I added a little bit of decal solvent on there just to make sure that they conformed to the body and also that little clear backing on there did not show up on the final vehicle. Did this crazy spinny thing and the model was complete. That's it for this model kit. I hope you have enjoyed this. One thing I did off camera was I went ahead with a gloss coat, just sprayed three coats of that on top of the model just to get it all nice and shiny to seal everything down, make sure nothing is going to come undone later on. Vending machine, I didn't show that. I just plopped those decals on. Decals worked very well on this kit. Um, everything was really easy to put together except the back. The rear tail gate. I was not very pleased with. It took me forever to get that in. Regardless, great kit. If you like these kind of trucks and if you like Coca-Cola, I would highly consider buying it. Anyway, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching. If you want to make me happy, subscribe. Um, like that thing. The best way you can support my channel is by subscribing. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.